Hey, what's up guys? Chad here. I am at a meet and greet in Dumaguete, organized by Paul, Old Dog, New Tricks. I'm sure you guys have heard of them if you're into anything to do with moving to the Philippines, retiring in the Philippines. And that's what this video is all about. Recently sat down with my friend Mike. His channel is Mike's Philippine Retirement. And that's what he is talking about today in this video. So if you're interested in moving to the Philippines, retiring here, he's a great guy. He is living his retirement dream and he shares with you his story, how he's happily married here and living the good life in Dumaguete, Philippines. Let's check it out. So what would you say are the key reasons why the Philippines is a good spot for you? The girls, cost of living. That's it. <laughs> All right, done. I'm not going to lie to you. you know, Mike, I, I think a lot of people can relate to that. Yeah. The cost of living was a big bonus. Uh, prices were just starting to go up, and I knew I could live here comfortably. Uh, upper middle class type lifestyle. Uh, not have to worry about bills, income. Wouldn't have to get another job. Wouldn't have to invest anymore and take that risk. Uh, the cost of living was a big uh big factor in me coming here the girls are a bonus all everything aside dating in the states sucked at my age in in the 50s and early 60s and i was picky i didn't want to date a girl that had a job i didn't want to date a girl who had a career um was set in her ways there's a certain thing she did every day at six in the morning eight at night and it didn't fit my lifestyle so coming here to the Philippines, I knew I could find the right girl for me that would fit into the lifestyle I needed and the companionship I needed. Uh, it's not a sex pat type thing. It's I wanted a companion. I wanted a partner that I could trust. And I wanted somebody I could count on 10 years from now. And that's what I came here for. So you're living in Dumaguete. Let's let's talk a little bit about what brought you to Dumaguete. You're you're familiar with other parts of the Philippines. You've experienced it a little bit. Talk about uh, those other areas and then why you settled on Dumaguete. Well, I picked uh, Bohol. Panglao is my original place to live. I found an apartment online. Uh, it was beautiful. It was on the third level of an apartment building uh, with a balcony, 50 yards from the beach, 50 yards from the ocean, and I could sit there and enjoy my life. Every morning I could walk down to the beach and I'd walk about two and a half miles down to the local coffee shop, uh, have coffee, then walk back on the beach. And I would take videos of my walk and I would share with my coworkers or my former coworkers. And they would say, Mike, you're living in paradise. And I go, yeah, I really am. But after about six weeks, seven weeks of walking the same beach back and forth, back, it gets old, you know, and uh, you know, I was glad I was able to decompress. I was able to get rid of all the tension from working, the stress of COVID at the time, uh, the stress of, you know, just nonstop. When you were working, nonstop being badgered. Uh, hey, we need you in work today. Oh, I want to take a day off. And we're like, no, we need you today. You're killing us. Come into work. Bill's coming in the mail every day. Somebody always trying to scam me on the phone. And... Um, Getting here and having no no responsibility other than paying my rent and having money to buy that cup of coffee in the morning, uh, the pressure just left. So I said to myself, I'm going to go check out Dumaguete. And I went and got on a ferry. Uh, I rented an Airbnb for a week. And I stayed downtown close to Ground Zero and walked to Boulevard. And I walked to the Robinson Mall and I walked to Hypermark. And I'd walk down to, you know, just walk everywhere. I didn't own a motorbike. I walked everywhere. The thing that caught my eye was the price of food. I could have a good meal for a couple hundred pesos where in Panglao it was four, five, six hundred pesos for one. Because you're in a tourist spot and you're paying tourist prices. So I said right there and then I'm moving to Dumaguete. It's a lot cheaper. It seemed nice. The, the foreigners that I met here seemed nice. And I enjoyed it, and I found a nice little apartment. After I got situated, and I was here a couple weeks, I decided I need to find somebody. So I'd sit on my balcony in my apartment at night, and i start scrolling through Facebook. You know, where they say people you might know, 
and do you want to friend them or not friend them? And I started looking, and Janet came up. She looked cute, and let me friend her and see if she wants to talk, and she friended me the next day. Uh, we talked uh, a couple times, and uh, then we met and ended up getting married a year later. Right. Yeah, the thing with Dumaguete, when I lived downtown, you could walk around. You didn't really need, you could use a trike, and get around a little bit, but you could walk. But I decided I wanted to have a motorcycle, a motorbike. And uh, I never rode one before in my life. So I bought a Honda Click used. I had the person I bought it from deliver it to me because I couldn't drive it from where, you know, I, where he lived. And it sat there for two to three weeks. It just sat, looking at it every day. And uh, I met Janet, and she said, I'll teach you. So she'd come over with her bike and her son and they would follow me and here I am going on these roads with no traffic up where we live in Cantilly. You've been up there, Chad. Mm -hmm. There's not much traffic. It's perfect. I'm weaving. You know, it's like I can't keep <laughs> my balance and she's just laughing. You can hear her behind me, <laughs> you know, and I'm going five miles an hour, ten miles. You know, I'm just having all sorts of trouble. But about after a week of her showing me how and everything, I got better and better, and now I can handle Cebu traffic, so I'm pretty pretty good on the bike now. That's awesome. So by by discovering this new freedom of being able to get around on your own, what did you discover living in Dumaguete? It was more than just yeah. a cool little friendly town, it right? It sure was. Uh, once Jan and I got serious and she quit working, we started going everywhere. She took me up to Chosen Cafe, which was about 25 minutes from where we lived. She took us to the beach in Zambagita. She took me to Dowan, to the beach in Dowan. She showed me the markets. Took a ride to the north side of town, Twin Lakes, and all these beautiful places that cost nothing to go visit other than the gas. And it's all day trip. It's day not far from no, Dumaguete. No, from Dumaguete, it's just hours. You know, you leave in the morning, and you, her son would go to school at about 8 o'clock in the morning, get off at 4, and our day trip was between those hours. And, uh, yeah, there's so much to see and do here in a short distance from Dumaguete. Just like tomorrow, we're taking a ride out to Chaton. It's 50 kilometers away. We're going to pass through four or five different communities, all with a different, um, a different sights to see. Some are on the beach, some are in the mountain. And it's going to be a beautiful ride, and we're going to enjoy our Sunday. Fantastic. And even where we are right now. Right. Talk about that because this is a pretty unique, cool spot, this, and it's one yeah, of your favorites. It's one of our favorites. It's Beslai Highland Brew Coffee, and it's on top of the mountain in Dowin. And this mountain here, over our shoulder, straight down, is Apple Island. You can see Siki Core from here. But the big thing is so many people are building houses on this mountain. This is the new Valencia out here. If you're coming to Dumaguete or Negros to build a house, get here quick if you want to live on this mountain. Property's going fast. Once you're established, this is once you've got a place to live, you have the furnishings in it that you want, you have your transportation, you know, you bought a car, a pickup truck, a motor, whatever you, a bicycle, whatever you need. Once you have all your basics, you can live comfortably on $2,000 a month, but have a savings, have a fallback. And just because that's a number you can live on, you'll be able to save money also. It's just on your lifestyle. It's such a hard thing to say. I don't know if you're a younger guy and you're going to date and you're going to go island hopping with you know the girls you meet, everything costs more. But if you're just a you know stay at home, stay local, uh, you can have a good life at um, 2000 a month, plus be able to travel to Cebu and to go to Davao City, but not on a, a regular basis every couple of weeks. You know, you plan a trip once every two months. But this includes having a wife and, and yes. a proper setup and a house and all that. Yeah, my, my budget is based on a family of three. Because it's J Janet, the son PJ, he's 11, and myself. For 2000 Yes. Okay. Yes. That gives people, I think, a pretty good idea what to expect. You have evolved a little bit since you've been here, and you've taken on a new thing. It, which is called YouTube, baby. How's it going, Mike? I'm a Dumaguete YouTuber. Yes, <laughs> there's so many of us. And you don't have a background in doing any of that, right? So not only no. did you come here and learn how to ride a scooter, you came here and learned how to make videos. And my, you're doing pretty good at it. So talk I, about that. 
I know nothing of social media. I started my Facebook just before I decided to come to the Philippines because I knew you, you needed Facebook. Uh, watching everybody on YouTube during the pandemic because I was locked in the house. I'd go to work and come home. That, that, that was my life. And I would watch YouTube. And then after I met Janet, we were sitting on the uh, porch deciding to do something. A friend of ours was looking for a house. We videoed the house and I said, well, I can't send it to him. I don't know how to do that. So I put it on my YouTube channel and let him watch it. And next thing I know, I, I got all these views on it. And like the eighth thing I posted on YouTube, I had 167,000 views monetized after about six weeks. I said, wow, this is easy. <laughs> and it's <laughs> Little did that, you know. It's... Little did I know. It's too much work. <laughs> but yeah, but it's been a lot of fun. The best part of it is meeting people. I would never have met Chad without the YouTube. I've never met Paul, old dog. I would never have met all my friends that I have here. Greg and Wilma, Mars, uh, Sean, so many. It's the friendships that we made through this. And relating to the audience who watch this and the people who are thinking of coming over here, answering their emails, answering some of their questions, and becoming friends, even though you never met them, you get to answer you know, their comments. And now, because you answer so many times, you know who Billy is. He lives in Pahrump, in Nevada. And I know who Roy is. He's in Wisconsin, Green Bay. And even though I haven't met all of them, uh, hopefully someday I will. And some days we're sitting in the coffee shop and one viewer will come in, like Miguel the other day, and I haven't seen him. And up, give him a big hug. How you doing? And uh, just good people. I met a lot of good people. So you started with real estate, but now your channel is, is sort of communicating to those that were in your shoes to sort of let them know about retirement here. Is that, is that about right? Yeah, How would you I sum up your channel? I would sum it up. People who want to have a normal life in the Philippines. They're looking to... Have a good partner, have a family type life, maybe children, no children, uh, the ups and downs, and how to get there. You know, life in the Philippines can be very simple, but it's very hard to get to that point. And sometimes you need someone to help you along. And that's your channel? That's me. I'm just trying to help help them along. And you're doing an awesome job. I, I, I know I you're helping so. a lot of people. I so. would hope so. <laughs> that's awesome. Any last words to the audience here, and then we'll wrap it up. Any last words? If you're going to come, come. If you don't think you're going to can afford to move here full time, come for vacation. Come and visit and then make up your mind. You never know. You might love it so much you'll go back at a second job, hustle real quick, spend a year and a half making some money and coming here. But do something. Be like Nike. Just do it. Come for the visit or come to stay. But come visit the Philippines for sure. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Well, there you have it, guys. Some good advice from a guy living his Philippines retirement dream. Thanks for watching. See you next time.